The reason we want replication is typically to make systems more reliable. So a node might be unavailable for all sorts of reasons. It might crash, it might uh, have a hardware problem, it might be just rebooting due to routine maintenance. Let's assume just there's some probability P that a node is unavailable at any given time. And let's also assume that whether one node is unavailable is independent from whether another node is unavailable. So we're going to assume that uh, faults are not correlated. This is not actually true. There have been studies that have shown that actually faults do tend to be correlated in practice, but just for the purposes of some rough estimation, it's okay for now to assume that they are actually independent. So now if P is the probability of one, any one uh, node being faulty, that means the probability of all N replicas being faulty is P to the N. And we can work out what is the probability of one or more being faulty and we can make a little table and what this table shows here is if you look at the column for at least one node being faulty, uh, as you increase the number of replicas, it becomes almost certain that at least one of them is faulty at any, any given time. So in that sense, the, as you add replicas, the system becomes less reliable because given anyone has a chance of failing, there's, as you have loads of replicas, there'll always be one that is failed at any moment. However, if we take the probability of all of them being faulty, this probability decreases exponentially as you increase the number of replicas. And even if you consider not the probability of all of them failing, but just the probability of half of the nodes, half of the replicas failing, this probability also decreases exponentially with the number of replicas. So this is why we can achieve fault tolerance because as long as it's okay if some of the nodes are unavailable, some of the replicas are unavailable, we just have to make sure that given at least most of the replicas are available, then the system continues working and then we can actually achieve very high reliability. So let's look at one particular property that we might want in a fault tolerant replicated system. And that is called read after write consistency. So what happens here is that a client first writes some data and then it reads the same data back again. And you would naturally expect that, that client to just to then see the data that it has just written. So here the client wants to set the key X to the value V1 and we attach a timestamp of T1 to that operation. It sends that update to both replicas of the database A and B. The, data, the uh, replica B receives that update and processes it, whereas replica A is unavailable and so the update is not processed by A. Then subsequently the client goes and wants to read X again but for some reason now the things have flipped around and now A is available, but B is not available. And so now the response that A that the client gets back from A does not reflect that value V1 that has been written. So the response is going to be some earlier value V0 um, that the replicas had before this uh, scenario here started. So in this case, we have violated read after write consistency um, which is kind of unfortunate because, you know, it's, it's very confusing if you write some data and then the data disappears and then sometime later the data reappears again. Now, what we could do here in this case is that the read and the write have to go to both replicas. And so that way we would ensure that we don't get this crossover problem where only one of the replicas has seen the update and we read from the other one. But now if we require a read or write to go to both replicas, then the system is not fault tolerant because if just one of the two replicas becomes unavailable, then we can't process reads or writes anymore. So we can solve this problem using something called a quorum. And what we do here is here I've got an example quorum of two out of three. And so when we want to make a write, the client sends its request to all three replicas. We're going to assume here there are three replicas and the, for some reason, the uh, request reaches two out of three of these two replicas. So the request reaches B and C, but not A. And then uh, B and C are going to respond to the client saying, okay, yes, I got your uh, request to update this particular key X. And once the client has collected two positive responses, then it's happy. So the fact that the, response didn't, uh, the request didn't get through to A is okay. So maybe A is unavailable. As long as B and C still respond, that's still fine. Now second, the client goes to read and it sends its read again to all three replicas. As before, only two of them get it. And so in this case, for some reason, the read to C doesn't go through, 
but the reads to A and B do go through. And so in this case now, uh, the client will receive responses from A and B. It will get the correct response that it was expecting from B because B has seen the right. It will get an outdated response from A because A didn't get the right. But at least one of the responses that the client got back has the updated value. And so now the client can use the timestamps T0 and T1 to figure out which is the more recent update. And this now allows the client to know uh, what the correct response should be that it returns to the application. And the application is happy because it has read after write consistency. So what do we have to do exactly to achieve this? We use quorums and whenever you want to make a write to some number of replicas, the write will be considered successful as long as it has been acknowledged by at least W replicas. So this is our write quorum. And then when you read, uh, if you get a response back from at least R replicas, so now we have W and R as our two parameters of this algorithm, and we require that the sum of W and R is strictly greater than the number of replicas in the system. So in our example here, W was two, R was two, and N was three. So two plus two is greater than three. And so in this case, we can guarantee that the read will see the previously written value, or maybe it was concurrently overwritten by another, um, by another client, but it will see an up-to-date value. Whereas if we have, if this R plus W is less than or equal to N, it could happen that we don't get the value back that we were expecting. So the idea here is that the read, the write goes to some subset of nodes, the read goes to some subset of nodes, and we want those two subsets to overlap. And we can guarantee that they will overlap in at least one replica if we have this R plus W greater than N, this quorum condition. Um, another way of putting this is that these, uh, we have these two subsets and uh, subsets of nodes have to have a non-empty intersection. So for example, if we have five nodes, we could require a write quorum of three and a read quorum of three, that would satisfy this condition. And in this case, those two subsets of, uh, of nodes are always guaranteed to have at least uh, one element in common. So they will have a non-empty intersection. One common way of constructing these quorums is what are called uh, majority quorums, where we say that uh, we are going to assume that we have an odd number of nodes, and as long as uh, the read quorum and write quorum are strictly more than half of the number of nodes, uh, then it's fine. So that means uh, we require two out of three, we require three out of five, four out of seven, and so on. And this means now that in a two out of three case, we can tolerate one node being unavailable as long as the other two respond. In a three out of five case, we can tolerate two uh, replicas being unavailable as long as the three remaining ones respond and so on. So this is all the quorums are about really. Now that we've done these quorum reads and writes, um, one thing that we can do is to, for the client can, can help get those, those uh, different replicas back in sync with each other again. So in this case here, the client received um, an outdated value from A and it received the up-to-date value from B and it didn't receive anything at all from C. And so the client already knows now that A and B and C are inconsistent with each other. And so the client can help clean this situation up by actually sending the update back to A and C. So C might not need it because it might be that C actually has the up-to-date value, um, but it just didn't respond. But there's no harm in sending it again. And certainly we want to send the update to A so that now A and B uh, both have the updated value V1. So notice that we use the original timestamp here because this is effectively just a retry. This is not a new set operation and therefore it's correct to use the, the right timestamp and the client can thus help propagate um, the, the values between the replicas. So we have the anti-entropy that we discussed earlier as one mechanism for the replicas to get back in sync. And this process here, read repair, is another way that helps the replicas get back in sync with each other.